aloha and welcome to this episode of the Hawaii Smooth Jazz Connection. I am your host, Gwendolyn Harris. My guest today is a singer, songwriter, and producer who hails from Houston, Texas. She started her music career at the age of 10 by singing in a tween group named Girls Time, which later became the group Destiny's Child. She has received many awards and accolades for her music and has performed with some of the best in the music industry, such as Janet Jackson, Justin Timberlake, Duran Duran, In Vogue, Shaka Khan, Jennifer Lopez, Stevie Wonder, and the list definitely goes on. She is known as the smooth, soulful songstress. I am so happy to have her here today. Let's welcome Miss Erin Stevenson to the show. Aloha, Erin. How are you? Aloha. I'm good. I'm happy. I'm alive. So everything's all right. Yes, I am so happy to have you here today. I have always wanted, to, I've been wanting to, you're on my list of people to interview. Yeah. That's and cool. I just, I just love you, love you, love you. For those, those of you that don't know, you need to follow her on Facebook because she's always posting and she has got what you see here today, this bubbly personal personality. That's how she is. She is she's just a sweetheart. But <laughs> I want to get this interview, uh, you're, you're, you're blushing, right? I want to get this interview uh, started. Why don't you tell us um, how you're about your musical journey and how did you get started in the music industry? Well, uh, Jesus, the short version, because it's it, it's a long version, but I'm going to give the short version. So uh, first of all, I'm so happy. Thank you. That was really cool to hear. You never know who's, you know, watching. That's why. Okay. So my, my journey into music, it started off when I was a kid. Um, I knew since Jesus, maybe five or six years old, that I was going to sing uh, or, or something in communication or something with this voice. I just knew it. Um, first professional career was, of course, as you just mentioned, which became Destiny's Child. I was an original member of that group, uh, left that and went to school, finished school, sung in several groups because I always loved, um, I always loved choreographing routines and dancing and singing and putting together harmonies. I'm also a musician, so I played instruments and I just, my life was engulfed in music. I went to college. Didn't go to college for music. I graduated college and ended up going into marketing. And I said, ah, I want to, I want to, I want to work for, a, you remember the movie Boomerang? Yes. Yes. That movie made me want to work for an advertising agency. So I thought I was going to go create ads and slogans and things like that. I ended up selling sparkless water, door-to-door -door sales. <laughs> they got me. And so I did it for about three months. And a friend of mine who knew that I sung said, hey, um, which we need a singer to sub with our band. And I was like, well, okay. And I was maybe 20, 22 at the time. And I was like, okay. So I went and did it, quit my, my sparkless water job. And I honestly hadn't had to look back ever since. And since then I opened for a lot of artists as a, as my own artist. And then from people who come to town to Houston, I either open for them or sing background vocals for them and just, Anywhere anybody will listen to me, divorce parties, bar mitzvahs, I don't know, you name it. I was like, let me sing sometimes for free. But here we are now. Oh, God, 20 something plus years later in the music industry, still full time. Wow. You know, that was a short version, but that was that was a lot. That was a short version. Of time. Now, I'm going to go back just a little bit because I got a few questions to ask you. Okay. The first one is, how was it? Um, working with Beyonce and Michelle Rowan at that time? Well, to be honest, what you see now is the Beyonce then. She was a workhorse even then. I mean, everyone in that group who was a, a part of that era of the group, everyone's doing something professional now on a professional level. One of the girls was singing with Prince. I mean, like everyone's doing something because it was a, a work ethic that was instilled in all of us at a very young age. Now, Kelly, still sweet. She's still that same person too. I was there the day that Kelly even auditioned to be in the group. And uh, I was still a sweetheart. Yeah, what, what you see from her, that's her, that was her demeanor then as well. But it, it didn't surprise me when Beyonce became a, a massive megastar. She, no matter what anyone personally thinks of her, Mm -hmm. She works for it, for sure. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Now, you say you play instruments. What instruments do you play? Jack of all trades, master of none of them. Okay. There you go. Uh, piano, uh, drums was my first instrument, piano, second, and then flute. Oh, okay. I play 
played flute and piccolo in college. Yes. Yes. I'm gonna break out my Lizzo at some point to some perfect <laughs> <the people. laughs> Oh my goodness. <laughs> now, you know, you talked about your um, working. Now I read where, and, and like I told you earlier, I thought it was the funniest thing. You worked, you, you went to college. What college did you go to first of all? I went to an HBCU, Prairie View A&M University. Did you? I went to Hampton University. There you go. Yes. 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 So you went to an HBCU and then you worked for NASA. Now, what I thought was interesting was that you went to your boss at NASA and told him to fire you. True story. So <laughs> it, it's not the first time I've been called crazy. It's not going to be the last. But... <laughs> But that's kind of how I operate. I'm, I'm a faith-based person. So whatever moves me or just keeps tugging at my heartstrings or waking me up every morning, I have to follow it. So now I have to take a quick step back to selling sparklets water. I did that for about three months right after college, thinking that I was going into an advertising agency. In about three months, I became like the top 10 in the country. And that's on purpose because, again, I'm a workhorse. And I quit. And so I went to do music full time and then it got, and I started doing a lot of work um, at some point. It, it just picked up a list. That's another story. I'm sure you're going to ask a question that's going to talk about that, but we got a little time. So I want to get it all in. I ended up at NASA. Every artist goes through this phase where they're like, oh, I'm tired. It's, I'm, I'm tired of trying or I need a consistent paycheck. My bills are piling up and I don't know when my next paycheck is going to come. I got a degree. Let me just go get a job. Anywho, I ended up working for NASA for about three years. I loved my boss. I loved my team. I was a communication specialist. Uh, I loved my team. I loved my paycheck. Well, let me say that. I loved my consistent paycheck. But it was during the recession, and I was waking up every day feeling like I was living a purposeless life. Out of all those things I just named that I loved, there was still something missing, and that was purpose. And um, people were crying, coming into work every day, begging for their jobs. And I was like, well, who am I to take some money out of somebody's, you know, to feed their families when I really want to go do something else? So I took a CD and I walked into my boss's office, just some music that I'd been working on. I was like, his name was Bill. I was like, Bill, Mr. Bill, listen to my CD, fire me. I, I don't want to quit, but I want you to fire me. He looked at me. He was like, you all got, you got to be the craziest person I've ever met. People are crying and you're asking to be fired. And I said, listen to these songs. And if you don't hear anything good, I'll be back here tomorrow. I'll give it all that I got, like I've been doing. And he listened to the CD. By the end of the day, he said, I'm still going to say you're the craziest person I possibly have ever met. He laid me off. The very next day, I got a call to go back on tour with Janet Jackson. And I haven't had a full-time job since. True wow. story. And Mr. Bill is still my friend to this day. Oh, wow. Well, thank you, Mr. Bill, because look at what she's doing now. <laughs> <laughs> now we're gonna get we're gonna get into the music side of things right now. So, and I asked this of all the artists because you know the pandemic took every took all you entertainers basically out, right? Completely. What did you do during the pandemic to keep sane, to get through it? It was nothing, again, nothing short of um, hard work paying off, number one. And two, just finding that will within to not quit or to not let it get me. I, I, I had a will inside for me to get the best of it and to take advantage of that downtime. For me, I toured a lot. I was always going for like a year at a time. So I, on the other hand, saw COVID as a blessing. It was a double-edged sword. I um, was able to slow down, yet it was the most I ever worked. I also realized that if the people that I was in, in working for, such as the Janets and the Justins, if they weren't working, I had no money coming in. And it forced me to go full throttle with my own career, which I'm so grateful for because it was always my initial um, desire in the first place. Two, you asked a question and, and I and I didn't answer it because you asked uh, about how, how it also kept me sane. I literally did concerts every, 
I call them concerts for quarantine. So Q U E <laughs> concerts. So quarantine concerts. And I did a different decade every week. I did the set the 60s, the 70s, the 80s, and I dress up. Like, I felt like if I couldn't be on stage, let me bring the stage to the people. Um, because music brings joy. It brings happiness. It, uh, it brings people together. It's just, it's the universal language. So I uh, figured if I couldn't get to them, let me turn on the screen and let me give all that I have to them. And I'm a really shy person, believe it or not. I'm an extreme extrovert and, ex and an extreme introvert. So it was terrifying. But um, it forced me to find my will to push through as Aaron as an artist and to get over my shyness. And it also forced me to sit back and be grateful for um, just life and air and this voice. Now people are calling, can you do a show? Yes, yes, yes. Give me the mic, yes. So uh, I'm grateful. I needed, the I needed the quarantine. You needed that rest and you needed just to... Yeah. Okay. All right. Totally. Rest and work, but internal work. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Now let's talk about your your album. Your first album was in 2017. Um, yes. It was your debut album, right? Yeah. That was entitled Naked. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. And then you had two songs or two singles off of there, right? Yes. 2018 Hanging. And yes. in 2019, make it last forever. Yes. See, I, I do my homework. I, I do see. my homework. I do my homework. But what I'm about to tell you is, everybody, she's got an EP coming up, right? Yes. Coming. It's called Cover Girl Uncovered. Yes. And the first time I saw you, I'm not gonna lie, as we talked about this, is when you did the video, and I had Marie Antoinette tell me to watch this video, right? Mm -hmm. Where you yeah. did You Gotta Be. It was a remake yeah. of You Gotta Be. Everybody, you have got to watch this video. It is fire. Yeah. It is fire. Erin does, she sings, you know, she has that amazing voice, but then she has Althea Renee on flute and Marie Antoinette on harp. And the whole thing is just fire. So you guys have to watch it. That's my favorite song. I'm just waiting for this EP to come out. When is that scheduled to come out? It's coming. Uh, I just released another single about three weeks ago. So we're looking at the middle springtime of next year for the, I'm going to release one more single at the top of the year okay. and then we're gonna drop the whole album, Cover Girl Uncovered. Yes. Now your latest single that you just released, you, you worked with Paul, Mr. Paul Brown. Yeah. That's my friend. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on to the world. Which was another amazing video. Your videos are hot, girl. Thank you. Your videos are hot. You I guys have got to go watch these videos. And that's just an amazing tune as well. Um, you and, and Paul and just everybody that you have in that video. That is amazing. And I can't, I'm telling you, I cannot wait for the next single. And I cannot wait for the next EP. But before we go any further. Can you give us just a little bit, a sample? Give give the audience just a little bit of sample of that beautiful voice that you have. Ah, uh, you, you know, I I I am in my studio right now, <laughs> and we can do um. What if I do the believe the one with Paul? Dude, Brown? You can do whatever you want. I just want to hear you sing. I just want everybody to hear you sing. You know what? Okay, <laughs> give a little bit then. Just Is that a little bit? Just okay. A little bit. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna plug in really quick and I'm gonna hit the play button. Do what you do. Do what you do. Okay. <laughs> Here we go. Here it is. <laughs> Revive. <laughs> Featuring Paul Brown and Guitar. Don't hide behind your pride. Come 
Spagatini, which of course everyone in the jazz community knows and loves Spagatini. I'm booked there every second Friday of the month, all the way through December. So whenever you're in town, if you just want to come in town, come to Spagatini every second Friday. So once a month, I'm there. Um, of course, Oxnard Jazz Festival is this Sunday. I'll be doing my set. Oh, October 29th, Halloween weekend. If you're looking for something to do, I'll be in Las Vegas. Now, everybody loves Las Vegas. So. Uh -huh. Yeah, we're actually going to celebrate the release of the, the song that I just did, Believe. We're going to celebrate that. I'll be there with the band and just have a good time. I don't have to work the next day, so I get to stick around. And I'm a very personable person, so I get to say some hellos and toasts and dance and sing and love and give all my energy, all that cool stuff. So October 29th, Las Vegas. It's at Gatsby's. Okay. Yeah. Well, so I'm writing that down for myself because I might be there. Come on. It's Las Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> now, what advice? Because I, I, you know, I, I ask this of all the artists, and it's mm -hmm. a very important question, I think. I'm what ready. advice would you give new artists coming into this industry? Because it is, it's very hard. It's very hard. So, what advice would you give? We make it look easy with a smile but it's a lot of hard work. Can I give two things? <laughs> yeah, you can. 
make yes. sure one talent means nothing. I would I tell that to every artist uh, or singer that's uh, up and coming. Get over yourself. There we can find great singers everywhere. It's a work ethic that will get you to where you're trying to go. Number two is um be prepared to work. Back to the work ethic the thing. Times have changed. Record deals aren't just coming to people. It's a TikTok world. But until TikTok discovers you, you have to literally put in a lot of work. And, and that may even just mean by yourself, as, as they used to say back in the day, you have to be the sheriff, the, the county sheriff, the district attorney, the DA, the cop. Uh, you got to be all those things, your own publicist, your own PR. You got to be on web design. Figure it out, though. Everything's on YouTube. Go to YouTube, figure it out, and don't be discouraged because no one's helping you. The help will come if you put yourself out there. It's going to come. Um, number three, be okay <laughs> with you. Yes. Find who you are and be okay with that because there's going to be so many opinions of what you should be and what you should do. But at the end of the day, what makes you you is you. So give them you. And that honestly, opposed to following the trends, when bank people pay more attention to you to stand out in the crowd because you don't blend in. So in spite of what it, you think it should look like or sound like, give them you, that thing that makes you you. Lessons learned. Those are my quick three. Wow. Wow. Look, I thought that was going to be my last question, but now I got one more question for you. <laughs> oh, it's great. No, I'm great. <laughs> you have collaborated with so many people, so many. Who would be your dream collaboration? Your dream collaboration? Really? Well, my dream collaboration is already gone before me to heaven. He's waiting on me. I don't want to go yet, though, but he's waiting on me, and that's Michael Jackson. Uh -huh. so, you know, I'll meet him when we get to the other side. But my dream collaboration right now, I think it's all already happened. And I can't say who it is because okay. it's on my EP. Okay. okay. I can't say. That terribly sucks. I know. And I'm a very, okay. I give all my answers. I'm a very open person, but I, I can't, I can't give it out. Just and I yet. understand. I understand. And he's not me. Yeah, he's, I mean, I'm sorry, my new album that'd be coming out, Cover Girl Uncovered. He is a feature on there. And the reason why I say he's a dream, and like I would have named all these other people, but uh, he's absolutely become one of my favorites. And uh, since my morphing into this little jazz role, since you mentioned my album Naked, which was all over the place in 2017, because I had songs from my 20s and everything. R&B, I just had to get out. It was my first baby. I had to get it out, but I've totally morphed into where I want to live as an artist in the smooth jazz world. And I found someone that I absolutely loved and uh, they're on this album. So you, everyone has to wait and get the album to find out who that dream collaboration is. Well, we're, we're going to wait for that album and I'm definitely, I'm definitely going to get it. I'm definitely going to get that. Now we got one more question. You have to tell us where people can find your music. Yes, thank you for that. Oh, and lastly, Maria and Althea are definitely part of my dream collaboration. That one's already oh. to fruition. I just saw three beautiful women at the peak of their careers, at the peak of their lives and womanhood, you know, who are in all of their glory. I just wanted people to see three gorgeous women together thriving and singing about just looking like a force, looking like Mother Earth out there in yes. the desert. Yes. Yes. And it was. <laughs> Yeah, and that's what, that's what I wanted people to see and to hear. So I, I literally had that vision and I called Maria and I called Athea. So that was definitely one of my dream collaborations too. I just heard that harp and that flute and then throw me in there. Okay, so uh, <laughs> everyone can find me online under Aaron Stevenson Music. That's AaronStevensonMusic.com. And everywhere on social media, it's Aaron Stevenson Music. And all of my songs are anywhere online. Google Play, Amazon, iTunes, Apple Music. What am I missing? Deezer, Tidal, YouTube. I don't know, YouTube, Tidal, whatever they are. It's the thousands of them. But if you type me in, I'll show up. Aaron Stevenson. See. See, I just, I just love speaking with you. This was a great interview. This, I told you everybody, her personality is just so bubbly and it's just beautiful. It's infectious is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> Back to that learning to embrace yourself and say, forget it. This is what, you, what you're going to get every time. Yeah, it's, it's me. I, I tried the old sexy stuff and I, it didn't work. It didn't work. <laughs> well, I, mean, but, I thank you so much for taking the, 
your busy, out of your busy schedule, time out of your busy schedule to do this interview with me. I am looking forward to meeting you in person yes. this weekend. Yes. See I you. Can't wait. And most of all, I can't wait to hear you sing in person <laughs> live. <laughs> And get that energy. Yep. Yes. And get that energy. So again, thank you so much. Thank you for having me, Gwen. I'm sincerely from my heart appreciate it. Thank you. Oh, thank you. To yeah. my viewers, until next time. Aloha and God bless. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.